Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to be doing the nodal analysis technique, and uh, the nodal analysis is the second, I mean, sorry, the third technique, methods of analysis for solving uh, circuits. So the nodal analysis technique depends upon nodes, and uh, it is like for the mesh analysis, what we mainly used was the Kirchhoff's voltage law. For this one, we're going to be using the Kirchhoff's current law. Now, for this, first we have to identify, for any circuit, we have to identify the nodes. And for this, I have already identified the nodes. A node is typically a junction of two or more elements. And uh, so it is like the, the junction where, it, uh, where the elements are joined together or something. So for this, the nodes are V1, V2, and V3, and this one. So this is a junction because this has one element connected to it and another element connected to it. Again, this one is a junction because it has four elements connected to it. The current source, these three resistors. And then for this one, this one is also a junction because it has uh, three elements connected to it. These, uh, these two things and then this one resistor and one current source. All right, so this was this very done, one milliampere. All right, so after we identified the uh, nodes, this is also another node because it has this element connected to it and again this element connected to it and this element connected to it. Now this we will take as one whole single node, one single node, because they, it, will, it, will be, it will be taken as uh, two or three nodes only if there was, suppose there was one resistor here, another resistor here, another resistor here or something. But since there's just one thing here, and other things are just wires. That's why we're taking this as one single node. So this will be taken as the V reference or the reference node. And this is grounded, obviously. So this will be taken as the reference node. And V reference is typically taken as zero volt. Since it is also grounded, we're taking it as zero volt. All right, so first we have to find out the equations. There will be uh, three, four equations since there are four nodes that we have identified. And since this is, the, this is the reference node, we won't actually count it as one whole node, I mean one actual node where we do the calculation from. This is just the reference node that's connected with all the other four nodes. All right, so let's identify the first node, V1. So V1 is equals to V1 minus zero. V1 minus 0 is 0 volt and V1 volt minus 0 volt equals minus 1 volt. This is the, uh, the what you call, the, the voltage that is between this and this. this. This node and this node, the voltage that's between this and this node is minus 1 volt. So V1 equals minus 1 volt. And then V4, uh, so for V4 also we could do the same thing. V4 minus 0 equals 2 volts. So V4 minus, sorry, V4 minus 0 equals 2 volt. Because between these two nodes, this is the voltage source that's there. So we already have two equations. Uh, we couldn't, we can't actually call them equations because these are just values of the nodes, I mean the voltages. So yeah. Now let's move on to the actual equations that you would get from these two nodes, V1, V2, and from these three nodes, V1, V2, and V3. So first, let's go with V1. Now V1 is a node, and let's see the current entering or leaving. Now, it does not matter since we don't actually know what's the direction of the current here, like if it goes here, and then what's what kind of current is going here, because there's so many uh, sources, voltage source, current source, and so many other sources. So we could just arbitrarily say, say that, the direction is this way. It doesn't matter. You can just get a, a negative sign or positive sign as the answer, but we could just take any direction. You could take this direction also. It's not, it doesn't matter. So, but I'm taking everything as the same direction for the sake of, for, for making the calculation easier. All right. So, uh, for this one, V1, the, the direction, the current goes up from here and from here. And also for V2, we'll do the same. The current goes up from here, 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 and here. Like, I'll just point all the arrows outwards because that makes it easier for me to calculate. And uh, later on, when we're going to be solving, uh, when, you, when you're going to be solving more complicated circuits, you'll see that this way is actually easier because you don't have to be bothered about where the current direction is going or something. So you could just arbitrarily take the direction here and whenever the direction is going opposite to the one that you suppose that you, that you assigned, then you could just write negative or positive uh, accordingly. All right, so let's write the equation for the first one. For the first uh, node at node one, 
at node 1, uh, we have V1 minus V2 by 1 kilo ohm. Remember, this is KCL that we're applying. So we need I equals V by R. So we need the current uh, we need the current in this case not the voltage like for kvl for mesh analysis we used we need the sum of the voltages here we just need current entering equals current leaving since we're taking everything is current leaving so current entering will be zero and then uh, uh what you call v1 v1 minus uh, v1 minus zero is uh two volt so v1 minus v2 is one and then we have v1 minus zeros equals two volt so we don't actually need to write the equation for this one for the node one because we actually we actually know the value of v1 which is minus one volt so for node one we don't need to write an equation let's move on to node two remember why why, why are we writing the equations why are we solving the equations because we know we want to find the voltage at those nodes since we know the voltage at uh, this node at the first node so we don't need to write any equation for that so at node sorry at node two we have v2 minus v1 by 1 plus v2 minus 0 by 2 because v2 minus 0 divided by 2 and then v2 minus v3 by 2 plus v2 minus v3 by 2 v2 minus v3 uh, and plus 1 milliampere equals zero all right so this is the first equation let's simplify it after simplifying we get minus 2 v2 plus v3 by 2 equals 2 so this is the first equation all right now let's move on to the second equation let me just increase the area all right so for the second equation, we have to go to this, we move on to this node. So at node 3, at node 3, we get V3 minus V4 by 3. Now V4, we know the value of V4 is 2. So let's just write it directly. V3 minus 2 by 3 plus V3 minus V2 by 2 minus 1 milliampere equals 0. So this is, uh, let's just separate it out. So this is equation 2. After simplifying, uh, sorry, after simplifying the equation, what we get is V2 by 2 minus 5 V3 by 6 equals minus 5 by 3. So this is equation 2 ultimately. Let's just rub it down. So yeah, these are the two equations that we get for V2, V2, V3 and V2, V3. So now you can apply Kramer's rule or you can just apply normal substitution or elimination method what we use to what we use when we're back in grade, grade 8 what we use to solve simultaneous equations these two equations. So the ultimately ultimately the value you would get is for V2 the voltage that you would get is minus 10 by 17 volt and for V3 you would get uh, 28 by 17 volt. So that would be the answer. So yeah, this was the whole tutorial um, uh, for node analysis. This was a fairly easy one. I think I prefer for methods of analysis for solving. I actually personally prefer solving it with node analysis because it's uh, much simpler, I think, because with mesh, I don't know, sometimes I get really confused, but people find some people find mesh easier. Doesn't matter, it's all your choice, but you have to know everything. I mean, you have to know all the methods of analysis or else how will you solve? I mean, sometimes this uh, it would require mesh, it would require node and uh, blah, blah. So, yeah. So, the main point about node analysis is use junctions instead of those loops that we've used. And here we use KCL instead of KVL because we are trying to find current entering equals current leaving. And the direction you assign while solving does not matter because it, it, while you're writing in the equation, it would change anyway because of the minus sign and plus sign and everything else. 
and uh, uh, we, you have to determine that when you have these kind of nodes here this weird kind of nodes that you would never notice try to identify these first whenever there's a voltage source like this that time you would you would see that there is actually a separate node for it when the, whenever there's a node uh, whenever there there's a voltage source between two nodes then you can just write it separately and you can just identify the values beforehand and then you don't need to write complicated equations for it. I mean, if you didn't identify this and started writing the equations, that would be a really long equation because you would have to write four different equations and that would take a long time. So it's better just first to identify these kind of nodes that you would have where the voltage sources in between two nodes. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. This was the whole calculation part. This is how you would calculate the nodal analysis uh, technique. And these are the answers. Feel free to check it out when you're gonna solve it by yourself. Uh, so yeah thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you want more uh, tutorials and good luck